the video I'm making showing you how to get pistons that are out, out of a frozen flock. You know, they just seized in there and nothing is getting them out. I watched a lot of stuff on uh, YouTube and they showed people with like a chemical you can pour in it and let it sit there for like three, six days. And, you know, of course, they're in prime ideal conditions. They're in a shop. The crank is no longer in the engine and they got it on an engine stand that can spin around. I've seen another one where they are simply taking rags and soaking them with gasoline and transmission fluid and putting it in there and cooking it. And then the guy still couldn't get it out. He got finally in the end using a big giant sledge, he got it out. Well, this motor you're looking at was sitting approximately 40 years. It's, a, it's an old Pontiac 389. Still got the transmission attached, the crank's still attached. All the pistons are up, but I'm going to show you what I did, and it's, it was like a miracle. And I had seven pistons out, and that thing still wouldn't turn. But I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. This project all started long ago. I bought a 59 Pontiac, restored it, and was, you know, it was like kind of a, you know, it's not a daily driver, but I could use it as one. And then I found this other 59 Pontiac that was totally, absolutely shot, and I bought it and cut it in half. So I could have a, you know, like a custom trailer to pull around with my 59. And this is the trailer. I haven't really been taking out because of all this, you know, pandemic stuff. There isn't really shows going on. And so things have changed. It's been the one show. And I did get a trophy. But that's what this is all about. And here is the other half that one day... I got this crazy dream that I might splice it back together and what you'd have is a two-seater. It's, you know, literally like a little Corvette. I might try to show you a picture of what it would look like. But, you know, I've gotten off subject and we're here to find out how to get pistons out of an engine that's been sitting for 40 years and they won't come out. And I found this by accident and it was like, wow. And so I... I want you to see what I did, and so here goes. When that, that thing was in there, even when I had every piston up, but when just one was still in there, with this breaker back, it wasn't budging with just one piston left. Now, you've seen these guys, like I said, they're doing all sorts of things. I was doing the same thing. I'm using this. I was using this, you can see it's mushroomed out. And I'm in there working from, you know, I guess you could say the inside to pop them off. And, you know, they weren't coming up. And these pistons, you and not, you know, the rods, they're not budging. This thing was really locked up. And one thing I want you to all know, this is this is cool, you know, because I got the crank still in there. The crank still in there, and because of, it, of that, these here, you can't take the end caps off of some of them. And so you're thinking, crap, how am I going to get all these end caps off with, you know, when you can't turn it? And I was down to the last two pistons. I think it was the number one piston and I believe the number two piston. Yeah, that those are the last two to come out. I'm pretty sure that was the last two to come out. But once you get a bunch of the pistons out, you can actually, going through here, get it the the bolts of the nuts that are holding the last two end caps in. So don't worry about that. You can get at them. But how did I get them out? And this is what I found out. You know, I have this, I had this cranked up in here so this motor was standing up like that. I'm in there pounding them. And then I got an idea. And this is what you do. 
Now you have I took sandpaper and I cleaned that up and cleaned them up, you know, so that when the king when the pistons start coming up, it wouldn't be running, you know, I try to make it as smooth a coming out process as possible. But this was the trick. This. You turn this on. I don't know if you can see that flame or not. And you heat that wall. You know, the guy, instead of using the rag with some gasoline on it, that rag is, the heat's all coming up out. You couldn't even probably, you couldn't cook a, a, a marshmallow probably barely on it. With this, you're getting serious heat on the cylinder wall. So that cylinder wall is going to expand. And then, now picture this happening. But the piston's still down in there, you know? Say the piston's up at about there. And I literally, it only took about five, six minutes of doing this. But I had some penetrate, I, I put penetrating oil in there. So the penetrating oil is pulled on top of the piston as I'm applying the heat. And as I was applying the heat, you actually could see after maybe four or five minutes. This thing's about empty. I, it was going a lot better. You could see after about four or five minutes, the penetrating oil was starting to seep down. The, the ones that I took out prior to doing this, when they, when they finally came out after beating on them and beating on them for so long, they were still just dry, you know, around the, you know, where the piston groove, the ring grooves are. It was all dry, dry bone, bone dry. This stuff was not getting through. But when you put this, use a torch, you know, the, the, the heat here is very intense. It, it's enough to cause that cylinder to open up enough that this is going to get through. And then when I went in there using this, and I guess you could call this a drift, whatever you want to call it, and started hearing it. Right up. I was like, man, why didn't I figure that out when I started with the first piston? I didn't do it till I got to the last piston, which was piston number one. And that's 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 it in a nutshell. since about 1975 and we got this thing here a few years ago it's been a long story behind this but this engine is frozen solid one more piston to go the other ones came out a little bit easier this is the only one that actually broke but it won't spin and it's, I just want the transmission anyways so I gotta get it so I can turn so I get the transmission off 
but this thing when we originally had it, the heads would the heads, believe it or not, got sold and was shipped to England to another man that's restoring a '59 Pontiac Bonneville over there. But originally, when the when it was all still together, I filled these cylinders with my penetrating oil. I mean, filled them, and they sat for a good year with that penetrating oil and me from time to time trying to turn it over by hand. You know, I had the spark plugs out. Eventually took the heads off and here we are. But same deal. The guy in England, his his block was frozen to pretty much the same circumstances. He ended up in the, basically the same situation. And it took months and months and he finally got it to to turn over enough that he, I think he did kind of the same thing, but he was using, he had, you know, a regular, you know, high-end torque wrench, and he was afraid of breaking that bolt off in there, but that's it, you know. my original intention when I bought the second one I planned to cut it in half and shorten it into a two-seater and you know I made the trail the back half into a trailer figuring hey I could use that as a trailer until I got around to working on the front half and you know I'm in there 69 and my and this is stuff I do myself I, I can't afford to hire somebody to do that but you know what I'm saying, it's still a dream, but I think it looks pretty cool. I don't know. It don't, I don't know if there's any others kicking around like that, but if you got one, hey, there's, there you go, there's something to, to shoot for. Well, I'll see you. Merry Christmas.